Welcome to The Poorcast. I'm your host, Carly Harmson. As a licensed master esthetician with nearly two decades of experience, I feel confident to meet you here every week to educate about the latest trends and must-have products, as well as to decode the science and demystify the overwhelming world of skincare. Whether you're a wide-eyed, curious beginner or you're a veteran skincare pro, this is the podcast for you. So grab your favorite face mask and discover with me someone who's not only a skincare guru, but also a card-carrying member of Skincare Obsessed, just like you. Get ready for this episode of The Podcast, starting now. Now, you've probably asked yourself, if you're here listening to this podcast today, should I be using collagen on my skin or should I be taking collagen? And so I want to be able to break that down and make it very clear how what collagen is and how it helps your skin and the best sources to get collagen for skin health. So what is collagen? Collagen is a protein made up of amino acids. It's very abundant in our bodies and our skin, and it is the strong fibrous tissue that's woven into different tissues and organs of the body. It's incredibly strong, has a real benefit or purpose to create form and function and strength and shape it in the skin and in the body. There are little collagen factories uh, within our body known as fibroblasts. So those are the cells that make this important protein. And oftentimes you're gonna hear collagen coincide with elastin, which is another important uh, connective tissue that we have in our bodies and in our skin. And today we're, we won't be talking about that so much. We'll be focusing more on collagen. Collagen is oftentimes thought of as being the glue that holds us together. The word collagen is derived from a Greek word uh, known as koala, meaning glue. So this makes up 75% of our skin, this important protein. And it is also known to support hair and nail growth. We'll also find it in the body in, in various places like in our joints, you know, in our, in our gut lining. So there's lots of different places that collagen exists. So let's talk about types of collagen now. There are, you know, upwards of 20 different types of collagen, but most of the collagen found in our bodies is made up of collagen type one, collagen type two, and collagen type three. We're gonna break down each of these so that if you ever find yourself uh, learning about a collagen powder, for example, you may wanna look for one to incorporate that has one of these important types of collagen. So type one collagen is the most common and most abundant in the skin. Uh, This is a type of collagen that has like the superhero strength In fact, gram for gram, type one is stronger than steel, which is pretty cool. You know, this is obvious that this is a really important building block uh, for wound healing. So when we have an injury or a wound or or an incision, that wound is healing, or or perhaps we just had, you know, sutures and and that uh, incision or cut is healing. Collagen is going to really be the workhorse um, when it comes to that wound healing process. There's also other, of course, other tissues like elastin and even hyaluronic acid, but collagen is really designed for the strength of the skin. And as the skin being a protective feature of the body, it's really our first line of defense, this like physical layer, you could see why it would be found really abundantly in in the skin. So type two is a type of collagen that's gonna really help to build cartilage in the skin. Of course, we have various places on our body that have cartilage, which is this really, really strong type of tissue that again, creates some shape and form in the skin. The most um, commonly thought of cartilage is like our nose and our ears. 
And then we have type three, which is our another, another type of collagen that is found in the skin. But unlike type one, which is that superhero strength, gram for gram, stronger than steel, this type is actually pretty delicate and it has almost like a mesh like quality. And so, you know, working in tandem with elastin, it, it allows us to have that protective layer that's pliable and movable. Um, and that allows us to do things like, for example, have facial expression, right? So we still have that strength and structure that holds the skin up, but we can move it. Type four is another uh, type of collagen that's really important in wound healing. So we'll see type one and type four often in that wound healing. And then type five helps to manufacture cell walls. It also can support the strength and growth of hair strands. In beauty overall, that's another uh, type of collagen maybe to consider if you have weak hair, or weak nails. Although there's up, upwards of 20 different types of collagen, we're really going to just focus on those because those really are the ones that are going to be um, most relevant to the health and appearance of the skin. What's a causing destruction in collagen? We do naturally make this collagen, these different types of collagen. As we age, we know there's this degradation or destruction of the college, collagen. So what is responsible for that? Well, the first thing is a type of aging um, known as chronological aging. And it's, it's something that we really can't stop. It's, it would be like stopping a clock and, and we can't do that. So each year that we have a birthday, you know, there are different things that are happening within the body and, and in the skin that are changing. And so with that chronological aging, we find at around, on average, the age of 25, this production starts to decrease. So we're really outputting a lot of the collagen until 25. And then after that, the production starts to decrease by about 1% every year. And you can see how that would compound year over year. Other causes of this uh, damage or destruction to collagen include environmental factors, of course. One that we're most familiar with is, you know, that um, forbidden sun exposure, UV exposure, because there can be damage to those cells, those factories, the fibroblasts that can create good create collagen and then create quality collagen too. Additionally, things like our diet, especially if it's a diet that has a lot of refined sugar in it, that can be responsible for a process known as glycation. And glycation is simply is aging caused by excess sugar. It, it basically can break down these important proteins in the skin like collagen and elastin by little rogue molecules known as AGEs or advanced glycation end products. And so that certainly can be um, a contributor to, you know, a breakdown of collagen. When we just don't consume or replenish our bodies with it because we have a diet that maybe is more processed packaged food, we're not getting as much of those collagen rich foods in our diet, you know, especially compared to, you know, I'm thinking of our ancestors. Now, please by all means, I'm not suggesting that we necessarily eat like our ancestors did. We live in modern times, but there may be opportunities for us in our diet to, you know, include more foods that are going to help to strengthen these collagen fibers and therefore help with the appearance of the skin. And, it, and then the other kind of side of that coin is just malnutrition overall. So when, um, there's a diet that is lacking in important minerals and vitamins and cofactors that are important to make collagen. Obviously, if we don't have the, uh, the pieces to make the collagen, we're not going to make it so much. And then I'll add chronic inflammation. Um, chronic inflammation is something, you know, I, I'm thinking of an example of chronic inflammation, like who would have chronic inflammation? I'm thinking of like pre-diabetes or even type two diabetes, there can be a lot of inflammation associated with that. And that can degrade our body's natural collagen and our ability to make that collagen. So I had mentioned with the causes of a breakdown of collagen, something known as cofactors. And so cofactors are this uh, little compound, oftentimes a nutrient, 
that we need in order to make quality collagen. And so I'm going to speak to some of those. And, and as I'm talking about those, you know, I'm talking more internally. However, a lot of those same benefits uh, apply topically too. So the first and major collagen cofactor, we want this nutrient in our diet. And it so happens topically, it's going to be one of the best things to help us make collagen. And that is vitamin C. And vitamin C comes on all different, you know, uh, forms and delivery systems. And so and concentrations, it's all about finding the right one for you. Uh, but that vitamin C is necessary to, as a cofactor, to help build co like stable collagen. So it's really going to help with the stability. Copper also is an amazing collagen cofactor, which can build that stability and help to cross-link with elastin. Now, just a side note, topically, you can use vitamin C to help with collagen production. You can use copper peptides to help with collagen production. However, you shouldn't use them together. They do actually neutralize each other, so you would want to use one or the other. Um, another collagen cofactor is zinc, which is going to help to activate those proteins for collagen synthesis. And then a couple others that come to mind, manganese, um, which is going to help stimulate the enzymes for production of proline. Proline is actually a, a collagen precursor. And then finally, hyaluronic acid. So a lot of times we see this little trio hanging out together, hyaluronic acid, collagen, and elastin. And that hyaluronic acid is going to help bind water to the skin to hydrate and nourish the skin, which can help to boost collagen. And just a fun fact, half of the hyaluronic acid in the body is actually found in the skin. So this is another important compound to the overall health of the skin. So how does collagen impact beauty? Let's talk about the lack of collagen because that's where we really start to think about it. And, and this is generally not in our 20s. This is in our you know 30s to 40s and beyond that we really start to notice that degradation or breakdown of collagen, uh, as well as the uh, reduced synthesis of collagen. Remember, by age 25, on average, we start producing about 1% less every year. So what does it look like? Less firmness. We start to see, you know, a little more softness and sagging, sagging in the skin. The skin's not as plump. Uh, with that, oftentimes, fine lines and then eventually wrinkles and sometimes even deep folds when we get more advanced into this collagen degradation. Uh, more free radicals. So we'll see more antioxidants. Proline, that is that precursor to collagen, is also a great antioxidant. So we make uh, antioxidants or we have reserves of antioxidants to really help combat these these rogue, these other rogue uh, radicals that, you know, scavenge in the skin, in the body, those antioxidants are super important. So proline is a great one for that. We'll see it also in our hair and our nails. So weaker hair, breaking, breakage, hair loss, even um, brittle nails, peeling nails, cracking nails that can definitely um, manifest. And then although this doesn't exactly. Um, it's a little adjacent to these beauty symptoms that I'm mentioning. It's It definitely is connected and that's gut health. So our gut health really has a, a unique relationship with the skin. And when the gut is in distress, oftentimes the skin is too. So collagen in that digestive tract, especially in that in the gut, the small intestine and large intestine, is so, so, so important to not only like keep us overall healthy and, and, you know, manage our immune system, but to keep us looking really radiant and as youthful as possible. So a big question that people ask is, should I be using collagen creams or collagen skincare? Does it help topically? I hate to be the bearer of bad news, my friend, but collagen, while it can be a helpful skincare ingredient, it's not going to help to promote new growth of collagen. It works topically in skincare more as a moisturizer. So it's a great moisturizer for the skin. So if you see a, a skincare product or a brand touting the use of collagen in their formula, you need to know that it is a great moisturizer. So if there's any claims at all by these brands or representatives of the brands or estheticians selling the brand, 
that it's going to help you to make collagen. That's just not what it does. The molecule size is just too large to really penetrate into the skin and make a difference. The collagen factories, if you will, those fibroblasts, they're not at the surface of the skin. They're actually a little bit deeper. They're in a layer that we call the dermis or the dermal layer. The large molecular size of collagen just cannot reach that area to stimulate those fibroblasts. So you might be wondering, so how do I increase my collagen production with skincare products? And really the answer, the gold standard for this in, you know, products that we use at home every day is going to be over-the-counter retinol. It's prescription counterpart that you can get from a dermatologist known as tretinoin. The brand or trade name is Retin-A. You might have heard it like that. Vitamin C topically and really the therapeutic range or dose or percentage needs to be between 10 or 20 percent. So you want to find something that's labeled as 10 to 20 percent. And if, if it's not in the name that it's in like the, the marketing materials or the education materials, we want to find that therapeutic dose. So vitamin C and then um, copper peptide I mentioned. I, I tend to reach more for vitamin C. There's a lot more formulas and brands and products available at all different price points. Copper peptides a little more niche, but those really retinol and vitamin C are going to be the gold standard to really help to ramp up collagen production. Now, there are some retinol alternatives, and those definitely can be incorporated with or without um, a you know, traditional vitamin A retinol or prescription strength tretinoin, but those are, are really going to be it. Now, you maybe have heard of of peptide serums or peptide creams and peptides. There's a, a type of peptide known as a signaling peptide. There's a lot of different kinds and types of them, but they do help to signal those, those factories or fibroblasts to make more collagen. And in some cases to make better collagen. <laughs> and additionally, stem cells and growth factors are kind of in that group as well. So while they don't necessarily uh, make the collagen, they can signal the synthesis of collagen. So how do we get more collagen into our skin beyond some of those skincare products that I mentioned? There are some treatments and, and I'm always, as an esthetician, I'm always going to point everyone, whether you're a professional or not, to a professional to get these treatments. We don't want DIY home care versions of this. They're just, first of all, in some of these treatments, not safe. Secondly, they're not going to be at the strength that we need to like really see change and results in the skin. So the first and, and probably best <laughs> option for a dramatic increase in collagen in our skin is through the use of microneedling. And microneedling is also known as collagen induction therapy. We are creating as, as estheticians or medical providers that are performing microneedling, we are creating little controlled sterile wounds. It's safe if it's, if it's done properly by a professional trained. That signals the inflammation cascade and the wound healing response and, and those collagen fibroblasts really start to ramp up. So that is what I would recommend. Um, there are advanced versions of that, like microneedling with radio frequency, which is going to add some heat, a lot of heat intensely in those little in those little needles, and that also really activates and stimulates collagen production. Another great option, and, and while there's some home care devices out there, a lot of them, in my opinion, are gimmicky. So I would suggest that you reach out to your local skincare uh, guru and, and get a recommendation if there's something you want to do at home. And that's the use of red light therapy. Red light therapy is legit. It does work. It's often applied in, in treatment, like after or during a facial, and that is wonderful. However, the results really come with consistent daily or every other day use. And so home care a version of this, like a home care device or light is ideal if you really want to see the change from red light. I did mention the topicals, so retinol, tretinoin, uh, vitamin C. Some of the hydroxy acids can help a little bit too. Uh, 
by, you know, sloughing off dead skin cells. Sometimes that activates a little boost in our cell renewal. And so sometimes we'll see some improvement there. Copper peptides topically, other antioxidants as well to help prevent that degradation of our naturally occurring collagen synthesis, and then sunscreen also, right, to, to protect against that UV radiation. And then there are collagen injections out there. As always, recommend that you do that through a highly trained, licensed <laughs> a medical professional, and those include injectables like Artifil, Balafil, and Zyderm. So that is really kind of the strategy when we're looking to increase collagen in our skin topically. There's also the option of consuming it. A study found in the Journal of Cosmetic Dermatology, Dermatology found that daily supplementation of hydrolyzed collagen for four weeks increased density in the skin and improved hydra hydration levels in eight weeks. Over the years, I may be on record somewhere saying that taking collagen didn't increase collagen. <laughs> That's before some of these studies and research came out. I still was a fan of it for gut health, which can improve the health and appearance of the skin. But I'm sure somewhere out there in the, in the interwebs, in, in the cloud, I am quoted as saying that taking collagen internally does not make help you make collagen. But this particular study found that it does. You'll notice that, that it says hydrolyzed collagen. So we'll talk about that in just a second. So in addition to seeing those, those amazing results, we know that collagen internally helps to improve gut health by strengthening and fortifying that gut lining. And, you know, there's different types of internal collagen. There's bovine collagen that's really rich in type one and three. So that's a really great one actually for skin health. There's chicken collagen that's type two. There's fish collagen, which is type one and easy to digest. For my um, ups, upset tummy girlies, um, we should start a club because I've I've lived in that uh, club for a long time. And then also eating more foods that are naturally occurring in these different types of collagen. You know, bone broth can be a great way to do that. Fish or chicken skin. Some people will like throw those in the air fryer and eat them like little snacks. Organ meats. I know, I know. <laughs> you you're like what liver? No. That happens to be like one of the best beauty foods in the world, even though it is so not beautiful. Uh, gelatin, you know, so making your own little gummies with gelatin. That can be a fun little Saturday project. And then there's, of course, supplements too. There's powders and, and liquids and capsules and all kinds of things. Speaking of supplements, what you want to look for is hydrolyzed, that word, hydrolyzed or collagen peptides. They essentially mean the same thing. It just means that those uh, proteins have been broken down into individual amino acids. So they're really bioavailable and easy to, to take and get benefits from. Um, so in you know powder form, it's really easy to add it into smoothies or a lot of people even add it to their coffee or a little hydrating drink midday. There's capsules that you can take. Look for that type one, ideally, or a multi-collagen product. And a, a good range for that collagen is between 20 and 40 milligrams daily. So if you're interested in that, that's what you're going to look for. Outside of supplements and looking for those foods that are really rich, um, a lot of them are animal foods. You really want to focus on tip to tell eating. So let me tell you what I do. Um, and this is like a super cost effective little little tip, little hack that I have for you is I go to Costco. I love Costco. My husband and I will go there like as a date, get all the samples, buy the things. And it's awesome. At Costco, they do a rotisserie chicken that you can get in like the deli meat area. Kind of become like a cult favorite thing, this Costco rotisserie chicken. You will see people just like lining up and then they bring out like 32 of them at once and it's just a frenzy, but it's worth it. They're $5 for this whole chicken. And my husband and I can get usually three or four meals out of that chicken. So, you know, we'll have like the chicken breast with some roasted vegetables, one meal, and then we'll do like a chicken salad for another meal and then a soup that will feed us like two or three more meals. So that's what we love to do with it. It's very, very cost 
efficient, especially in this economy, economy, my friend. And then I take that, and this is the most unbeautiful word that I'm going to use right now, but I take that carcass and I put it in a crock pot, pour, you know, filtered water over the top. You can add some aromatics like onions and garlic and herbs like rosemary and thyme. And then I just let that go, you know, for 12 to 24 hours, strain it. And you have this beautiful, beautiful uh, bone broth that you can use for soups or make a bone broth latte, which actually can be really delicious. If you really want to make that broth even more multi-collagen, this is also going to sound really gross, but I promise you, this is one of the best things you can add to your bone broth for skin health. And that is getting, you guys are going to hate me, chicken feet. You can get them at like Asian markets. They're really cheap. I'm getting chicken feet and throwing a couple of those in there too. And they've been all cleaned and, you know, sanitized. So they're, they're safe to do that when you get them from a grocery store processed. And then look for the diet rich in all those important vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants. Those are those cofactors that help us make great collagen. Finally, exercise actually can help um, by reducing inflammation, and that can help with healthier collagen production. So one study showed that moderate intensity exercise increased collagen production by increasing our growth hormones. So that's something to consider too. So just to recap everything we've talked about, collagen, remember, is a collection of those amino acids. Those are the building blocks of protein, and they help us to make up the strength, form, and shape of our skin. They add youth to the face, whether we're, you know, we're talking about the naturally occurring collagen or we're supplementing with collagen, or even some of these uh, topical ingredients can help make more collagen. It really does help you know, it's, it's one of those fountain of youth types of products. And we do know it declines with age and these environmental factors. So we want to do our best to mitigate the environmental factors. We can't stop the clock so we can support our, our skin, you know, by incorporating these collagen promoting products topically or internally. Topical treatments that we should look for, for, you know, increased collagen, the real uh, researched and results oriented treatments are microneedling, microneedling with radiofrequency and red light therapy. Those are the most effective. And then collagen and skincare, I repeat, <laughs> collagen and skincare products do not create collagen, but they do moisturize. So, you know, it's not, we're not going to throw out the baby with the bathwater here, as they say. Look for these collagen peptides internally, look for peptides topically, as well as retinol and vitamin C topically. Those are the gold standard in topicals for making, helping us to make our own healthy collagen. So I hope that was helpful. And let me know, are you using collagen? Have you seen a change in your skin? You can actually find a lot of kind of amazing testimonials and before and afters from Uh, supplementation of collagen. Um, And I'm also curious, what products are you using that you love that you feel like make a big difference in the firmness of the skin and the reduction of fine lines and wrinkles? Um, I want to know because there's so many great products out there that can help support us with that. And I want to hear what everybody's loving. So thank you so much and see you next week. Thanks for tuning into this week's episode of The Podcast. If you like this episode, be sure to share it with a bestie or on your socials. And if you love the episode, please leave a review wherever you get your podcasts. Your positive feedback means so much to me. You can connect with me at The Real Best Statistician on Instagram or The Best Statistician anywhere else. And hey, babe, this week's forecast looks like clear with a chance of glow. See you next time.